our solar system's instability. Did a fifth giant planet mess up the orbits of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune? In the early solar system, the gas giants sat in a dusty cloud around the nascent sun in nearly circular orbits. The solar system's current planetary orbit seems stable, but that's only because the planets have settled into them over billions of years. The early solar system was a much different place than what we see today, and for almost 20 years scientists thought they had a good handle on how it got that way. But more recently data had started pointing to some flaws in that understanding, especially about how the giant planets in the outer solar system got where they are today. Now an international team of astrophysicists thinks that they have a better idea and understanding of that process, and they believe it could help solve a long-standing argument about the early solar system. Currently, the best model scientists have for the formation of the solar system is known as the NICE model, the NICE model, N-I-C-E, after the town in France, Nice, where it was first developed in the year 2005. And as part of this model, the gas giant set currently reside in the outer fringes of our solar system, originally orbited what became the Sun much more closely with more circular orbits. However, something caused instability in the system that kicked those planets out into the much more unevenly spaced and oblong orbits that we see them in them today. What exactly caused that anomaly has up to now been a mystery, but a team of, comprised of researchers from Michigan State University, Zhejiang University, and the University of Bordeaux in France think they have the answer. It's as simple as dust in the solar wind. Early in the, uh, or early, uh, in the early solar system, the gas giants sat in a dusty cloud around the nascent sun in nearly circular orbits. When the sun ignited, it began to blow the dust in the circular, semicircular disk away. Some of the sun happened to blow past the orbits of the gas giants, causing the instability that the Nice model sees. But how the researchers fleshed out the idea also solves problems the Nice model had. One major one was the data, such as that collected from moon samples, pointed to a much quicker path to this instability that was typically found in the original Nice model. And with this update, inside out dust could evaporate the, the cloud, the dust cloud evaporation model. That instability's laborious path of hundreds of millions of years is condensed down to a timeline of only a few million years, which matches better with the existing data. That's not the only data that matches well. The Nice model itself is partially controversial for pointing to a potential ninth planet in the early solar system, and it does not mean Pluto. A favorite of many conspiratorial sky watchers, Planet 9 or Planet X, has been garnering more and more attention after the Caltech study of 2015 found there might be something huge lurking around 50 billion miles away from our Sun. The original Nice model actually works better with five gas giants inner planets, but in those calculations, one of those planets is ejected out into interstellar space to become a rogue planet. In the updated model, the outcome of the planetary orbital alignment is essentially the same, whether there are four or five starting gas giants in the system. However, they do match re reality slightly better if there are only four planets initially introduced in the model. As with a lot of theory, this new model could potentially impact our understanding of the formation of the early solar system and could resolve a long-standing argument over what the original trigger of the instability that so shaped our planetary neighbors was. But ultimately, even this new model will have to hold up the data to the data, and that's plenty more to collect before the true story of our early solar system is clear. And this was from uh, Universe Today, Andy Thomas Wick on Bended Reality. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.